Holy crap, that actually worked. What's up guys? So today we are going to be working on our budget Jeep build again and trying to get things uh, moved along a little bit further. Going to troubleshoot a, a overcharging issue and then uh, some probably change out the hazard light relay. Going to swap that out, uh, see if that will fix our issue and then if we need to change out the multi switch on the Jeep to see if so to make sure that the headlights will work and stuff like that. Uh, also, I did get to pick up a ECM. I'm gonna swap that in to see if they'll fix the overcharging problem. And I do have a new odometer for it because it seems like the old one doesn't really work, even though I tried to dry it up and connect it back up, it's just not no bueno, not working. All right, let's do it. flashlights or flashers so we're going to swap that out I just you know pulled out the random relay out of my other Jeep and just stuck it in but that's not exactly what it needs so I picked this one up from AutoZone it was like 15 or 16 bucks it says it's supposed to be the correct one okay Let's see if that works and yeah, you can see the odometer is dead. Some of the lights come on, but that's about it. Uh, yeah, let's hook up the battery and see if that's a new relay. Maybe it's just that the battery is completely dead, so probably gonna need to hook up something more fresh. Okay, so I put in the new hazard light relay. Let's uh, hook up the battery because this one just keeps dying completely. So after messing around with it for a little while, I swapped the ECMs over and this started up, it was still peaking in the voltage. Then what I did was I took apart the dashboard right here. This is the old odometer and uh, put in the new odometer or new old whatever that I uh, picked up from my buddy. And you know what, after I started it up with the old ECM, out these uh, electrical gremlins so first of all when I pull on the switch the headlights don't turn on the only time they turn on is if I shut the car off with the key on or actually with the key out and then I just do like a high beam and then the headlights turn on and then they do not go with the think the headlight uh, switch in the off position so they stay on until I turn the key over then they go the headlights turn away so 
Uh, most likely, maybe the headlight, uh, what do they call it, multi-switch had failed. Whatever the controls, the hazard light uh, signal and then the headlight signal and all that. Because I know that, I mean, this, the switch itself seems to be functional. Uh, to turn on the corner lights and stuff like that. So, this is going to be interesting. So after some time uh, thinking and troubleshooting this thing, I came to the conclusion that the multifunction switch, the turn signal, hazard light switch and stuff, uh, most likely went bad. And I think the conclusion would be to just replace it with a new one. So here, when I picked up a new one from O'Reilly's, it was like $38.99 and this is what it looks like. Just, you know, basic switch so because it seems like that there is power consistently that keeps coming from the switch itself on the vehicle from the steering column here uh, like for example if the power is on you hear that just constantly clicking but there's no you know no lights unless I actually turn it and it functions See what I mean? Anyways, so in conclusion, we're just gonna have that replaced and then see what happens and then kind of move on forward. Oh, as you can see, I've also had the interior kind of taken apart already. That's gonna be in a separate video. That way, you know, just, it's not all mashed together like a one big blender. <laughs> all right, well, let's get to it. So in order to get to this particular switch, we would have to take apart both of the upper and lower shroud on the steering column. To do that, we would have to remove these screws right here. Looks so like they're all just Phillips screws. One here, here, and then one in the back here. Uh, this one is just, I think, a, if you need to rekey the, uh, the ignition uh, key a cylinder lock, there's like a, I guess, like a secret key or whatever. Or, you have to press or unscrew in order for the cylinder lock to pop out and then you can just uh, repin it. Then we will need to take off three screws here, here, and then one on the bottom here. They will be, uh, we're gonna use a T20 uh, torque. Anyways, let's get to it. Out just like that okay so then get that one loosened up press the other on the bottom and then let's take a look at it uh, from the initial inspection doesn't seem like we can find anything wrong but I'm pretty sure that it's probably corroded inside I guess I can pop it open and take a look and see what was the cause of the whole issue Okay, so here I have transferred the shroud cover or with the little rubber piece from the old part onto the new one. If you're interested to see what's going on with the old one, what, what it looks like inside, you can uh, just keep watching the video and then a little bit later I'll kind of show it around inside. Anyways, so then we will go ahead and make sure that this little indicator 
nipple sticks out and it's going to be right between the those two right there because the steering wheel is going to be straight and that's what cancels the turn signal when you turn it on so it works properly so we will slide this back in like so make sure that it gets back into its proper place it's kind of being the pain right now there we go, that's back in there, okay, we'll hook that up later, okay, make sure that's over there, that is in its proper channel, okay, more screws, so first we pre-fit everything lightly, make sure that all screws are not cross-threading, and then this one, I think I made a mistake on this one. That should not be going into that. So the self threader will go on the bottom. Yep, and it's going in. Fairly easy. Now, we'll take the one with the fine thread. Put it on top. Oh, we didn't screw up the threads, which is great. connectors back in it looks like there's nothing in the way it's all clear so let's get this bottom one clipped in then the top one of course the top one's being a pain There we go. Okay, and that's clipped in. Clipped in. Clipped in. Psh. Okay. What's going on with this? Why is this being all weird? Ah. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go give it a try. Let's power it on and see what happens. Okay, so we got the battery hooked up. Now for the moment of truth to see if it will click keep making the really go crazy oh it's not clicking not unless i think oh yeah there we go wonderful beautiful now that works that works as well. Looks like we put it in properly. Sweet. And that's how you place a multifunction switch on a 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ. So if you really clicks uh, with the key turned on, but you know you're not using the indicator lights, indicator lights or uh, hazard lights being turned on and it's just basically the multifunction switch just keeps sending the signal out by itself for the relay to keep uh, functioning or trying to turn on some sort of a function that's probably it now for those that were kind of curious how the multi switch is set up inside let's take a peek so here we have the contactor board where our contactors the ones that are supposed to shorten certain ones, they would slide, you know, basically from side to side. And every time that you know you carry the turn signal, it just slides over and then shorts out certain pins on each one. From what I can tell is that, for example, on this one, I'm not sure if that's a power supply pin or not, 
but we'll see how it's all like it changed color a bit here and here and it's all corroded right here seems like those were the issues there and it was not uh, disconnecting i guess or springing back and it kept contact you know keep, keeping the power constantly going out to let's see i'm just going down this way to this pin right here that's why the relay just would not have a chance to shut off and because it constantly get had the power going to it because the other contactors are the ones that send the signal indicating for the dash light to turn on either left or right or both indicator lights so yeah and that's pretty much the gist of it cool well probably could have fixed it just clean up all the contacts and then put some more uh grease on it but whatever i mean it's only like 38 bucks Alrighty, so that was it simple as that Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So after fixing the multifunction switch, I was hoping for the headlight switch to start working and then sending the signal to the headlights to turn on and it don't. So I guess I'm thinking next either to replace the headlight switch or unless you guys know what the problem could be, you pull the switch out, the corner lights come on, the headlights don't. Uh, if you pull on the high beam uh, lever, the high beam turns on, but then it goes off as soon as you let it go. So, if you guys got any, idea, any ideas on you know, where else to look besides just the headlight switch itself, please be my guest, leave a comment, let me know if you guys dealt with this. I would really appreciate that. Alrighty, so if you guys liked the video and it was helpful in any way, press that thumbs, thumbs up button, press the subscribe button right there kind of on the bottom, I think it's that way. And then uh, stay tuned, see you guys later. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Peace.